To avoid any confusion, this remote that has the smart buttons and the gyroscopic controls is X9A. And this one is X9B. Now let's get started. Hello, this is Eric of Sparky Tech, and welcome to my review of the iPassport X9A and X9B. They look identical this side until you flip them around, but they are both pretty darn close. Both have charging USB Type C ports and look basically identical other than that front face. Both are listed as AirFly remotes. What is an AirFly remote control? The idea is you can control your cursor on your device and control to the air so you can choose all your lettering through moving it around, depending on your device if it's supported. Next, we also have voice assistance. We can press the button and say commands and both have the same information on the back. And this one controls Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and RF remotes that could be programmed into here my personal favorite remote that I ever used. But these ones I'm gonna find more about because I have no clue how these work yet, honestly. I haven't even pre-tried it. Both include these USB type A dongles, which is also included with the other remote I reviewed. And both include a type C, let's see if I get a closer view. A type C connection to the remote for charging to type A to your computer or charging device. Now let's get started to PC. We're gonna to go to Android mobile phone as well and see what we can do. So let's add this and turn on my Bluetooth. Bluetooth on, and now I'm gonna add my device. Press the back button and okay. Hold that for three seconds. One, two, three. And here it is. Once added, of course, you don't have to re-add because it's going to be there and it should auto-connect. Yeah, you can see that on the screen. I can see that on my camera screen. It's connected. So if I want to control it, I can use the little air cursor for my PC. Press OK on done. But what if I want to type something? Let's go to here. I go here. I go to my keyboard side and seamless as hello. How are we doing and we have the function key as well let me get a close-up for that using the function key i should be able to use all those texts in blue so let's use a function key and uh press number two three yes that worked so we can do the other functions holding down the function key and pressing the other key, so if I press function delete, that's going to be zero, as we see on the remote right here. Rather than repeating all the functionality between the remotes, I'm going to show the difference of this remote and the USB dongle. Here's the dongle. And this time, we're going to connect it into the PC USB port. We can see on screen, the Bluetooth is off right now. And the dongle should be detected, let's see. There we go, it's moving on the screen. So we can see it on the screen and on the recording. Now what's unique about this remote over the other one? Well for one, let's take a quick look at these. This remote is a notch up and down for volume and this one has a different volume thing that says plus minus on the one key why is that because you can see it scrolling up and down volume adjusting if you want to do it quickly all you're going to do is tilt plus lift your hand and if we want to lower quickly we're going to do the same idea we're going to tilt and drop our hand now, if we want to do this slowly, we're going to simply tilt nice and slow without raising or lowering the remote. There we go. PG plus minus, and so it does. It scrolls up and down on the PC. 
on a TV, a smart TV, it might scroll up and down on your smart menus or through your movies. Very convenient. You can scroll up and down using this little thing here. And if I want to select something, like I want to select this video, I can press the little middle button just like on the other remote and select it, press OK. For this, I'm going to have to scroll up and down on this other remote that I'm using right now. Well, this one has that mute, which will work on PC as well. And both of them have the same sort of keyboard if we didn't ca gather that part. So they both have the same function in those particular areas. Now let's go to mobile phone. Volume up and down. Wow. Okay, so this is totally different. As I move the remote control up, it goes up and it goes down for volume when you hold the volume button. Totally unique to this. The other one has the volume up and down individually. So now we figure out that control function. And does page up and down do anything? What the heck did it just do? Oh, ha! I have an air cursor on my phone. Yes, I'm not joking. I'm this, this is the first time I ever use this. First time ever, and I have an air cursor. Using this remote control, I can go through my screens, as we can see right here. I can even go up to search. So let's see if I go up there, click on home. Well, darn that. That took me to home on my menu. Pretty sweet stuff. Either way, limited functionality, but the volume up and down is <laughs> it's pretty funny to have. Now to see if I can learn the remote, I'm gonna hold down this button. And now I'm gonna press this button on the remote till it's solid and then tap it. Let's power it on. There we go. And here's the dongle in my hand. And I gotta plug that into TV because we'll see that does nothing. No volume, no nothing, no control of anything, no air mouse. Now the TV recognized the device. You can see that on the bottom. Now it disappeared. And let's see what happens. There goes our volume. And mute button works. That's just simply using the dongle. And uh, let's see, air mouse works as well. So the dongle allows you to control a lot of the basic functions. Since this is an LG TV, sadly I can't search by voice, but I should be able to use the keyboard. So I'm gonna use the keyboard right here and see if I can type something in. Okay, so I can go to these things here and uh, see I'll choose Sure, why not? Right here. And there we go. So I can search at least by typing, but not by voice on the current LG TVs. I believe this is 2023, if I'm not mistaken. You have limitations based on your TV, and of course, Google Assistance is here. And this is LG Voice Assistant on this LG TV. The biggest thing for me is there's no place to put the Bluetooth dongle. You're going to be putting it somewhere, hoping you don't lose it. In my case, I will be, probably be keeping it in my computer somewhere in a USB port. So it's going to be there for using my remote control. Now there's also the A6, which I reviewed weeks ago. Link pinned in comments and in the description of this video, if it's not pinned in comments yet, I will be adding it soon enough. This one is almost exactly identical to the A6 in terms of function. Both these are made of metal. The A6 is made of plastic. They're lighter weight than these metal ones. And how is this really different other than the gyroscopic feature? Well, for one, we have the smart functions on this one, as well, of course, as the gyroscopic volume up and down and the page up and down gyroscopic feature, which I find extremely useful rather than going really slowly up and down in volume. If it scrolls the volume up and down too quickly, it could get annoying as well. Leave your comments below. What are your thoughts? What are your experiences? I'll, of course, be using these because I love the iPassport remote controls. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, help this channel grow, and have yourselves a most wonderful day.